In this lecture, we want to study the slider crank mechanism, which is one of the most widely used linkages in designing machines. Then we will talk about different applications of this mechanism, depending on which link drives the system. Next, we will study some of the modifications of this linkage, such as the eccentric mechanism, as well as the slider crank with offset. And finally, we will learn how to compute the distance between the dead centers of this mechanism, known as the stroke. The slider crank mechanism is in fact a special case of a four-bar linkage. Let's see how it is possible. We start from a four-bar linkage like this and convert it to a slider crank mechanism in two steps. As you see, link number two rotates as a crank and link four oscillates like a rocker. Notice the path of motion for the pin at the end of link four. Obviously, it is a circular curve whose radius is equal to the length of link four. Now, as a first change, we want to replace link four by a slider. A slider that moves along a fixed path on the ground, which is exactly the same as that of the pin of link 4. This way we will have a slider crank mechanism, which is equivalent to the previous 4 bar linkage. As you see, the slider moves along a curvilinear path in this case. Now, as a second change, if you imagine link 4 with an infinite length, then the radius of the slider path becomes infinity. In that case, the curvilinear motion of the slider approaches a rectilinear motion. So we could make a slider crank mechanism from a forward linkage simply by replacing one of the side links with a slider moving over the ground and assuming an infinite length for the replaced link if we want a rectilinear motion. Regarding the application of this mechanism, it depends on which link is the driver. If the crank drives the system, it can be used wherever we need to convert a full rotation to a reciprocating motion, such as in an air compressor as you see here. In this example, the crank is driven by means of an electric motor. In case the cylinder drives the system, the common example of this application is in the diesel engines where the gas force pushes the piston to move along a cylinder. Then this motion is transmitted to the crankshaft via a connecting rod. Note that in this application there will be two change points during the cycle, being also known as the dead center positions. One of them is here where the crank and the connecting rod are aligned together and the other one is here when they are aligned again in a different way. Usually a flywheel is needed to force the crankshaft to keep rotating at the right direction. Here is a modification of the slider crank linkage known as an eccentric mechanism. As you see, the crank is a disc with center C which is pinned off center to the ground at O2 and rotates inside a ring at one end of the coupler link. The other end of the coupler is pinned to the slider at point D. The motion of this mechanism is equivalent to a slider crank linkage having a crank length equal to O2C and a coupler of length CD. A special case of a slider crank mechanism is when it is designed with an offset, such that the path of the slider does not intersect the crank axis. In this mechanism, there are two extreme positions for this slider. One of them is here, when the driver and the coupler become aligned with each other, and the other one is here, when they are again aligned in a different way. 
The distance between these two extreme positions is called a stroke. Let's see how we can find the stroke. Firstly, we consider a slider crank linkage without offset. We assume the length of the crank A and for the connecting rod B. One of the extreme positions happens when the crank and the connecting rod are aligned this way. So A plus B is the position of this point. X is A plus B. If I consider X from here. And the other one is when we have them aligned in a different way like this. This time minus A and then for the coupler link plus B. So the position of this slider is minus A plus B. Now the distance between the two extreme positions is this position minus this one. So the stroke is A plus B minus minus A plus B becomes 2 times A. Therefore, for a slider crank mechanism without offset, the stroke is equal to twice the length of the crank. In the second example, we have a slider crank mechanism with offset. The crank length is A, the coupler B, and the offset is H. The offset is the distance from the rotation axis of the crank here to the path of the slider here. So from this point perpendicular to this line is H. In this extreme position, we have A plus B. If we consider a triangle here, this side is A plus B. This side is the offset H. And we can compute this side using the Pythagorean theorem, which becomes A square root of A plus B squared minus H squared. Similarly, for the other extreme position, we have this part as B minus A. If we consider a triangle here, this side is B minus A. This side is H. And this side is A square root of B minus A squared minus H squared. Therefore, the stroke becomes the difference between these two extreme positions of the slider, which is the square root of a plus b squared minus h squared minus the square root of b minus a squared minus h squared.